It's difficult to draw exact lines between the social classes in the United States. In fact, it might be useful to imagine them as occurring along a continuum rather than being strictly divided. The most commonly identified categories are upper class, middle class, and lower class. If we want to make even finer distinctions, the middle class can be divided into the upper middle, middle, and working, or lower middle class. You probably have some idea of which class you belong to, even if you don't know the exact definition of each category. Interestingly, most Americans believe that they belong somewhere in the middle class, even if their life experiences and backgrounds would suggest otherwise. While keeping in mind that the borders between classes can be blurry, we're going to examine the typical model of different social classes. The upper class makes up just 1% of the U.S. population, and its total net worth is greater than that of the entire other 99%. The upper class consists of elites who have gained membership in various ways. Some, like the Rockefellers and Carnegies, came into old money through family fortunes. Others, like Mark Zuckerberg or Lady Gaga, generate new money through individual achievements. Many in the upper class maintain that status, not through income from a job, but by investing enormous amounts of money and taking advantage of huge tax deductions offered to those with investment-based fortunes. Members of this class make around $2 million per year, and sometimes so much more than that. They're often highly educated and they're influential. They tend to attend private schools and prestigious universities and display this very distinctive elite lifestyle. Some seek positions of power in government or philanthropy. The upper class is largely self-sustaining, with most members remaining stable and few new ones able to gain membership in its ranks. The upper middle class comprises about 14% of the population. This group tends to be well-educated with college or postgraduate degrees, and they're highly skilled. Members work primarily in executive, managerial, and professional jobs. They may enjoy modest support from investments, but generally depend on income from a salaried job, making around $150,000 per year. As a result, the upper middle class is most likely to feel some financial stability. They usually own their homes and may especially value activities like travel and higher education. The middle class makes up about 30% of the population though some social analysts believe that the middle class is shrinking as a result of a variety of phenomena, including economic recession, along with high unemployment, corporate downsizing, and outsourcing of work to foreign countries. Many people who would have once been considered middle class may have moved down to the lower middle class, while some others have moved up, moved up to the upper middle class. The middle class comprises primarily white-collar workers, skilled laborers in technical and lower management positions. Also includes small entrepreneurs and others that earn around $70,000 per year. Most members have a high school education and a two or four year college degree. While members of the middle class have traditionally been homeowners, which is a sign of having achieved the American dream, this trend has changed during the recent recession and the associated banking and mortgage crises. Along with issues like the cost of housing and given other debts carried by many Americans, not all middle class people can afford to own their homes anymore. The working class or lower middle class makes up about 30% of the population. Members typically have a high school education and generally work in manual labor or blue collar jobs as well as in the service industry like retail, restaurants, tourism. Jobs that are often more routine, where employees have little control in the workplace. Members of the working class typically earn around $40,000 per year. A small portion, especially those who belong to a union, may earn above average incomes for this class. Working class people typically have a low net worth and live in rental housing or in a modest home they have inherited or long saved for. The working poor constitute approximately 13% of the population. Members are generally not well-educated, most have not completed high school, and experience lower levels of literacy than other classes. They may also lack other work skills valuable in the job market. Typical occupations include unskilled temporary and seasonal jobs, including minimum wage jobs, housekeeping, day labor, and migrant agricultural work. The average income is around $25,000 a year. This group suffers from high rates of unemployment and underemployment, with some members receiving social welfare subsidies. Another 12% of the population, the underclass, 
could be considered as truly disadvantaged. These Americans live in poverty conditions and typically earn $15,000 or less per year. As such, they may have chronic difficulty getting enough money to support their basic needs. They may hold a few steady jobs and depend on public benefits or charity to survive. They're often found in inner cities where they live in substandard housing or are homeless. Their numbers are increasing in the suburbs as well. They are part of a group that is considered officially impoverished by federal government standards. A separate section later in this unit will be devoted to discussing poverty. Because socioeconomic status is based on a collection of complex variables that include income, wealth, and education, as well as power or prestige, it's difficult to say exactly where the middle class ends and the upper class begins. Also, individuals may embody a variety of characteristics that make precise socioeconomic status classification pretty difficult. Someone may be highly educated, for example, but make money cleaning houses while working on a novel. So how would we categorize a person like Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart? He was the product of a struggling Oki family, a farm boy and state college graduate who became a billionaire businessman. Walton did not come from a background of privilege. He neither attended an elite university nor worked in a prestigious occupation. He was called America's shopkeeper, and despite amassing a huge fortune, Walton remained close to his rural roots. What sociologists would say is that Walton is an example of status inconsistency, or stark contrast between the levels of various statuses he occupied. Another example is Mother Teresa, who is a Catholic nun who ministered to the poor, sick, and dying in Calcutta, India. As a member of the clergy, she held some occupational prestige, but her religious order took vows of poverty, and she had virtually no personal wealth. Yet Mother Teresa was regularly ranked as among the most admired people of the 20th century. She garnered numerous honors, including the Nobel Peace Prize but she was most concerned with how to parlay whatever power she gained into helping the world's most needy. Of course, not all examples are quite this dramatic, but status inconsistencies are especially prevalent in the United States because of our open class system. Class mobility is more easily attainable here than in many other countries, so we're more likely to see people with a mixture of different statuses. While we seem to be able to recognize class distinctions implicitly, there are no systematic ways of delineating each category. Still, sociologists have made an effort to understand and define class. And next time we'll turn to the theories that result from those efforts.